So I recently said about comparing uh, the new vintage of the Cristalmas Pinot Noirs to uh, the Corleone brothers from the famous novel by Mario Puzzi. Of course, this novel then got made into a bunch of short films that never really got off the ground or received much acclaim. So I thought what I wanted to do is take these wines, world famous wines, to international buyers. The last vintage from Cristalum uh, was the, their, their Cuvée Cinema was named Best Pinot Noir from the New World. But I think the 2009 vintage is even more exciting. So I thought let's take these world famous wines and let's compare them to characters from these films and, you know, give the films a bit, bit of a boost. Maybe a few more people will watch the films and uh, learn something about art. So that is what today is really all about. It's a bit of a mnemonic to help you remember each wine in this range because if you're going to buy a 500 Rand bottle of wine, you want to make sure you get the right one. Now, for me, the safest bet is to just buy all four, but we'll talk about how that's possible later. Also, if you are more interested in learning about winemaking rather than just wine drinking, then towards the end of this video, I will be talking about elements such as fermentation vessels, whole bunch fermentation, and even fruit ripeness, and how that adds to the flavor of a final wine. But between now and then is about five minutes that you might never get back. So feel free to skip ahead to the end of the video if you're so inclined. Now, Peter Allen van Leysen is, in my mind, at the helm of one of the most exciting wine outfits from the Himmel and Arda Valley uh, in South Africa. And mostly because while he comes from a very well-entrenched uh, winemaking pedigree, three generations of very famous South African winemakers, he's not so much focused on perpetuating the past as much as he is on progressing and taking new ground into the future. And when I say focused, I mean very focused, in that Cristalum only works with Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. He's not trying to make a new wine for every season or to uh, please all the wild grape hunters like myself, but rather taking the classics and working with them in great detail to produce truly distinctive wines. And we're going to discuss just how distinctive they are. But lastly, he is, while aiming on the future, uh, is in no way forgetting about the importance of a sense of place. And every single one of these wines will demonstrate that as you drink it. More at the end about why you should actually be buying all four. But let's get back to the wines at hand. First up, we have the Litigo, or Litigo, or Litigo. And this is, uh, if we were to compare it to one of the Corleone brothers, would actually probably be Tom Hagen who is not a Corleone at all. In fact, he was adopted into the family. You can tell that from the surname Hagen. And he's a lawyer. Now, Tom Hagen is a calm, sedate, measured, balanced character, not unlike this litigo. And in fact, just like Tom Hagen was not from the Corleone family, but had a different birth family, so the litigo is not a Hilmer and Arda wine at all, but rather the grapes come from the Overberg. Now, while this may be sedate and and serene, it is now by no means bland, and the same can be said for good old Tom Hagen, but um, you should know there's just less tension, perhaps, uh, a little less of that huge, lean, tall acidity, but also a little more uh, balance and poise, as you would expect from an Italian family lawyer. Then on the opposite end of the temperament scale, we have wine number two, which is the uh, the whole bunch Pinot Noir 2019 by Cristalum. Now, this is highly explosive, so tense, uh, always ready for some fisty cups. And for me, that's why it's best represented by Sonny Corleone, played by James Kahn. Now, unlike Sonny Corleone, I think this whole bunch Pinot Noir is probably the one that could age the best. It's got such amazing, grippy tannins. Uh, obviously, as the name suggests, all whole bunches. So you've got spice, but you also have these clean red cherry fruit. It's just uh, an insanely elegant wine, and while you do have to fight a little bit with it, I mean, for me, that's where all the joy lies. I'm slightly masochistic that way. Anyway, whole bunch Pinot Noir is James Kahn, always up for a fight, but this guy's going to last longer than Sonny Corleone did, that's for sure. Third in the list, we have the Cristalum Mabalel Pinot Noir. Now, for many people, this is uh, one of the flagship wines, and for me, this is best represented by Marlon Brando himself, in the sense that it is big, ripe, opulent, as far as Pinot Noirs go. So like Marlon, uh, he's, there's no tension here. He's pretty resigned, actually, but he is just regal as all hell. And uh, this is the wine where actually ripeness is a little more pronounced. And you can also tell that from the fact that its alcohol is higher, mouthfeel is fuller, there's more dynamics going on, but there's not the same kind of tension that you'd get from Pinot Noir. And uh, finally, on the list, we have 
pure Pacino in the cinema cuvee. The cuvee cinema is poised, light on its feet, but ready to pack a punch. It's pure class. It's both silk and tension all at the same time. And if you were going to buy only one, this would be the one to start off with. But as I said earlier, there are good reasons why you should look at taking the entire range. And you say to me, but Han, how am I going to spend 2,000 Rand on four bottles of wine? And this is really the big tragedy about wine so often, is that the wines that stand to teach us the most about winemaking are often the wines that seem most inaccessible, quite simply because of their price point. Now that doesn't mean that they're not worth 500 Rand, but it's kind of like having kids. You have to experience the joy before you know it's worth going through all the suffering. And you may realistically say, okay, listen, 2,000 Rand is an insurmountable problem that I cannot solve when it comes to buying four bottles of wine. And I'd like to propose that, like so many great problems, if you turn the issue on its head, you'll see a, pro a solution present itself immediately. One can't help but think back to the New York manure crisis around 1894, 1895. The streets were packed with horse poo. There was nowhere to put it. It was up to the gutters, right? Poo everywhere. And people were trying to solve it and dissolve it and burn it. And chemists who were doing all their clever little tricks in their lab to try and get rid of all the horse poo until Henry Ford invented the car, which meant horses were redundant in that purpose. And so the horse poo disappeared. All along, people have been trying to get rid of the poo when what they really needed to do was get rid of the horse. Now, how does that apply to this? Well, we go out for dinners all the time with groups of friends and, and sometimes it feels justified to spend a huge amount on food because, hey, we're socializing with friends and then you tack some wine onto it. I'd say, let's flip this on its head. Get some like-minded friends. Go out with the express purpose of drinking all four of these bottles each one of you brings one of those bottles and then instead of going out for a big ostentatious dinner, you have finger foods that are paired to a Pinot Noir. So essentially what you're doing is you are bringing your food bill way down because you know that your wine bill is going to be higher than usual. And then you get some of these amazing blind tasting socks made by Incognito. Which one day they will have an Instagram group and then you'll be able to learn all about them. But uh, Inga Smith is the lady who makes these. They're absolutely fantastic because you just pull them over all the bottles and so no one knows what is where. And my challenge to you, when you've decided to track down all four of these bottles and drink them all together, you make sure that it's a blind tasting. You don't have to decant because you just got these amazing socks. And the things you want to be discussing are fruit ripeness, whole bunch fermentation, and, and fermentation vessels. So what's so amazing about the Cristal and uh, Pinot Noirs is that all of them are fermented in tanks and only moved later into barrels for maturation. When you ferment things in tanks, what you preserve is the fruit flavors, those kind of primary, clean, clear notes, and you get less of the, of the kind of more funky, crazy elements that sometimes come with the Pinot Noir. And this is what characterizes the Cristallum range most. But secondly, and this is what I think is beautiful, is it's very clear that the Mabalel is using riper fruit. And also, if you read, if you go into the technical notes, you see that they use far less whole bunch and a lot more whole berry. So there's less of the stalks and more of the berries, and that's why you get this riper, richer, rounder uh, wine. And as I said earlier, you can tell it's 14%, it's half a percent more alcohol, which means that there was more sugar in the fruit at the time. So this is a beautiful way to connect something on the bottle with a flavor in the bottle, the label, 14%, and in the bottle, you've got a richer, riper wine. Also, when you ferment with a whole bunch, now there's a whole bunch of things that happen uh, inside the grape, but forget about that. Just focus on the fact that there are stalks and stems in the wine. Now we know we get tannins from seeds, we know we get tannins from skins. On a Pinot Noir, the skins are never going to contribute too much tannin, but stalks really can. And this explains why your whole bunch has got these amazing grippy, kind of, it's an amazing grippy, tense tannins and uh, definitely a little more spice. So when you guys are tasting blind, as a little tip or trick, see if you can spot the Mabalel by looking out for ripeness and also looking for oak. It's 20% new oak. Uh, see if you can get the elements of vanilla in there, which is there and then um, with the whole bunch see if you can pick it just by looking for tannins and spice so this is an amazing way to use your palate to taste wines but also at the same time to be asking your questions how did the winemaker get those flavors into the bottle and i would say that my collaboration wine over food approach should not just be applied to this particular range but to any group of wines where you go those seem amazing but i can't afford them well then get some friends who are like-minded and sit down together. You split the cost of the wines and eat salty cracks. At the end of the month, salty crack, if you like. Uh, and this way, you will 
be able to engage with wines which otherwise may seem inaccessible to you without, at the end of the day, spending more than you would have anyway having gone out for a dinner.